So what are these all over? These are, it's what is it, 9.1 ounce Dacron, right? This is 9.1, you mentioned polyant. Is there any heavier sailcloth in this? Yes. Wow. Sailcloth goes up to, uh, well, typical sailcloth goes up to 11. My. Something, and then uh, really big heavy boats, even more. Well, this was certainly heavy enough for my 38 footer. And these have 10,000 miles on them. And what would you say about their condition? I'd say they're as good as new. <laughs> well, that's bad for business. <laughs> well, what you buy with, with heavy sails is durability. Um, you sacrifice some ease of handling. Yeah. Bigger threads. Not only do they stretch less but with the heavier threads generally, but they, um, but the bigger threads are better, last longer in the sun. Uh huh. So on both counts, you get you get your money's worth if you buy a little heavier weight sail. Right. At the handling. Okay. See, we did one thing different. We made these longer this time. Oh, good. So that as it stacks up, it's easier to get them in. Okay. Let's get the last one in here. Okay. What do you think, Oliver? Does it work? Looks very nice. Looks good to me. Perfect. All right. The secret to keeping it white is never to go sailing. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> yeah. There are two things that discolor it, of course. There's there's the rigging, touching the rigging. That's one thing. And of course, it'll gray with sun, sun exposure over, over the years. Alternate back and forth. Back. As we get to our first fold, we'll put our first sail tie on. Hold it a second. You want to get the first tie on there? I'll hold it for you. For the full batten, of course, you have to pull the leech back into our flat. Right. So you can put the first sail tie on. Get those good long folds. Yeah. Well, it's because the batten, there are two slides between each batten pocket. That way it facilitates dropping it quickly. I see. With full bats, you don't need as many slides. So, Oliver, what is the weight of this uh, Genoa cloth? Uh, this is um, uh, 6.5. 6.5, okay. So, it's, it's in the old days, sails were generally lighter than they are now. They've probably gone up about an ounce. Your last one was 8.4, which was a smaller sail. Right. This is a 135. <laughs> These are prone to breaking because nowadays most furlers use, most sailmakers use webbing at the head and tack so that it rolls up tighter uh -huh. instead of rings. And uh, we use uh, spectra webbing because uh, because this get, gets exposed to the sun chronic, the, uh, the polyester stuff will tend to deteriorate. And a very common thing is for people to suddenly, they're sailing along and they're tired. They're, your sail comes down because the webbing breaks. I had asked Oliver to make uh, the clue as low as he was comfortable with. And uh, it is pretty much parallel to the shear line at the moment, but raised up by this pennant. dock or somewhere in a lawn or somewhere where you can scrub them with a, with a detergent and hose them off. The best thing you can do is keep the salt off of them, which can be done on the boat by hosing them off. Right. 
salt is an aggregate, so it collects dirt and abrasive substances. And then when the sails get rubbed together and folded, the, uh, it uh, harms the material, the threads. Uh, a little bleach okay? You use a very mild solution of bleach, yes. Okay. That's what the commercial sail washers use. One way to fly a yacht ensign is about one third down from the top of the mast. I like it. It doesn't interfere with anything and it makes an, an active statement. That's Malibu dead ahead. The city of Santa Monica and Los Angeles 15 miles away in the haze. A pretty typical Thanksgiving week here where there is no weather at all. There's a little bit of choice involved in choosing sails for a cruising boat, much less of the choices that racing boats have. Because after all, we're not going to pay attention to the set all that much. We're not trying to beat anybody to the windward mark. So the choices are how many battens would you like to have and should they be full length or not? And I have chosen full length battens. There were four battens up there. Those are those pieces made of fiberglass that run horizontal to the water and help the sail keep its shape. And also when you lower the sail, they control it. And when you luff the sail, that is when it, when you release the main sheet and it just flutters in the wind, then the battens keep it uh, from making a lot of noise and I guess wearing itself out. These are lazy jacks. These lines, also a, a a cruising choice. The lazy jacks just hold the sail when you lower it so it doesn't fall off the boom onto the deck, which is not a problem if you have a crew to hop up there with sail ties and uh, pull it up, but it does make single handing or, or short handing, as they call family sailing with just a couple of people, uh, easier. The size of the Genoa jib, Genoa jib just means that it's a foresail that extends beyond the main mast here. If the sail is smaller, it's called a jib. A Genoa overlaps. It's an overlapping jib, and I chose this time a 100 and 35% Genoa. My offshore sail is a 120% Genoa, meaning that it goes past the main 20%, whereas this one goes past the main 35%. The difference is a bigger sail, more sail area in light air, perfect for today, which is where we have about nine or 10 knots of wind at the moment. At my request, this sail was cut to sort of parallel the line of the deck or of the light lines. Uh, whereas my offshore sails have a higher clue, one that goes all the way up there, so the sail rises up. There are a couple of benefits to that. One is that the position of the lead isn't so significant with a higher clue. It puts the whisker pole higher when you wing it out and um, it generally makes things easier. This is a, this design is a, a kind of a half-baked variation on what are called deck sweeper Genoa jibs that racing boats have. You can obtain an end plate effect by having the sail come all the way down to the deck. And that's why you see on some sailboats the lifelines are uh, dive down from that stanchion there to the base of the bow pulpit to give the sail a chance to get closer to the deck. Um, I think that the compromise looks better and is half the pain in the neck 
than a Genoa jib that cut with a deck sweeper uh, design is. But that's just me. Lots of choices. Sailboats are full of them. You can't make a mistake if you are pleased. So I want to check the uh, loft tension on the general, which might, I didn't look at it before I deployed the sail. So we'll just let this new sail flop for a minute. We'll go out to the second mark. And you can certainly see at a glance that the lead has to be changed. And I think tightening up the bluff straightened things out a little bit uh, uh, in the furl. And I'll just uh, deploy it fully and we'll go off on, on a nice broad reach down that away. Rather nice. We need to take up the slack on the lazy Genoa sheet because that prevents everything from getting fouled. A little tension on all the lines, always. Well, I think that that's right handsome in its own way. A new cloud of Dacron. Not so bad for Friday in November. I do have to revise my rigging of the lazy jacks. The best way to put marks on lines like this slippery spectra in this case is when you get the right setting, which would be more like that, is to uh, either whip it at the appropriate place, the way you'd whip the underbar rope, or take a needle and uh, some cell twine and just um, sew through it a few times just as a marker. Tape doesn't work, it comes off. Magic marker fades in the sun. Say, what time is it? Can you judge by the sun? I can't. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's two o'clock. I did not take a moment and whip up a souffle. On the contrary, um, this is my go-to desperation luncheon. Bumblebee snack on the run. Chicken salad kit with crackers. I find it has all of the ingredients in the can. Sodium two pounds, fiber minus three, potatoes zero. Huh. These are very special crackers. Have you noticed in the movies, the real movies, that you never see anybody actually eat like this?
and that's why. Mighty good. That's better. We don't ask for much. 